This is a message for every black man in America. I salam alaikum. My name is Sharazad Ali, and I am the author of The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. I would like to welcome you to the Black Man's Guide on Tour video. I have produced this video so that black people all over the country could sit back in the privacy of their own homes and find out what it is that I have been trying to say, what my message actually consists of without the interruption of television talk shows, uh, radio interviews, and newspaper book reviews. I would like you to try to be objective, try to hear what I'm trying to say, and uh, enjoy it. I want you to find out about the lecture, the controversy, the truth, and the excitement of the black man's guide to understanding the black woman. Look at me. I'm the black man. Me and my woman are lost, traveling in a strange land. I'm having it hard, and my future looks bland. And no, I don't expect you to understand. I'm doing bad for all to see. But all this universe belongs to me. And I plan to get on the right track as soon as I get my woman back. Since I've read this book, and I've read it three times in two days, okay, so you knew I was doing some reading. And I'm not an El Evelyn Wood speed reader either, okay? But the thing about it is made me so strong that even with, that, like, I, like they say in Star Trek, the shields are up. There's a part in the book that got me stirred up. It was the part of socializing with the white man. Okay, now let's, 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 let's hit a home run here, okay? When you go out with a black woman, you are supposed to take her to the water club, to, uh, uh, what's that, you think, tavern on the green, okay, spend two, three, four hundred dollars, so she can say to her girlfriend, yeah, he took me to this place, he took me to that place, I really don't like him, but you know, he just took me out, I had a good time, girl, alright, yeah. When she goes out with the white guy, the white guy will say, hey, look, baby, I ain't got no money. I don't think I can take you to his McDonald's. 
And the first thing she'll say, oh, he's a struggling artist. I can understand that. Well, brothers, you're a struggling artist, too. I'm a struggling artist, okay? God forbid if you take it to the bar. God forbid if you take it to the bar. Let me tell you, like, 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 the, like the dice man said, throw a burger down our throat, baby. All right? Because as, the day, as I get older, as I get older, I'm, I'm 35 years old now, and I don't have time for bullshit. Okay, I'm a single man out here. I'm a good man, okay? Good looking man, and I ain't got no time for no collard green eating bitches talking about bullshit. Now, I got a new girl. Deeply, I have come to realize that she is, the woman who is described in this book is evolutionarily superior to any other black woman who has ever been created in America thus far, and this is why. The black woman in America has a secret agenda that the black man is not even aware of. All right? Her experience in slavery has produced a creature that has yet to be produced because of what she went through. Being kidnapped from her children in Africa, her father, her mother, her people, raped, chained, stripped naked, bought and sold, watching her people, her baby snatched from her, sold from plantation to plantation, in many instances branded, in many instances forced to have sex with big white brutes when she was only nine and ten years old has evolutionarily produced an individual that has never existed on earth before. She has made a pact with herself that never again will this happen. And in her designing and planning and scheming through 400 years of suffering under white people, she has developed a system to destroy this country that is so sophisticated that the black man can't even see it. That's what I like to say. Thank God Almighty for this sister for writing this book. For the simple reason, she did, I, the impression I got from the book is this. She did not say it's all black women's fault, because you know you got a lot of bad black men. It's just that a lot of black women think that they're infallible or perfect, and that's not the case at all. I'm glad she points, and the thing about it, with this book, you ever notice it's only decent black men that face this kind of treatment from bad black women. How can so many black women be hurt by this book, be so uh, enraged over it, and there's no truth in it? <laughs> you know, if there's no truth, why are you so enraged? If you're not in it, you don't know nobody in it, what's, what's all the excitement? If you write me a book and say, I, heard, I saw a man with four heads walking down the street, you know, hey, that don't apply to nothing I know about. It. I don't even pick up the book. You know, but now if, you, if it's a truth and it's touching you, and maybe it's uncovering you, or maybe it's giving your old man a chance to peep at you, then maybe you want to close that mouth up. You know, seem like to me the ones who's complaining are the most out of control women I have ever seen. And they say they're not out of control. You watch them on TV, watch how they attack their sister. I mean, some of them are sitting there, great big ones, they sit right next to her like, you know, well, I don't agree with you. Boy, like they ready, like somebody set them up there to, to jump on the sister. They did. You know? Now, why would you do things like that if it's not true? You're showing you out of control. You're showing you just like she described from page one. The ones like that's from page one through the whole book.